so hello everyone i hope uh, i am audible and visible to all my students i just want a quick thumbs up uh, from all of you if you can hear me and if you can see my video oh very well so welcome all of you in this uh, targeted tuesdays in this series we will be discussing one short short mcqs and every week we have a different subject this week is given uh, for the discussion of the questions of dermatology now today i will be discussing one question from a topic which is a very important topic in dermatology and that is vesicular bullous disorders so welcome all of you and i am dr cheshta agarwal your educator of dermatology now from this vesicular bullous disorder we will be giving you one mcq and i will give you some time to solve that mcq and then i will tell you what are the important features which you have to look in your exam which will help you solve the questions from vesicular bullous disorders so i hope my audio video is all going fine and can i get a quick thumbs up from all my students very well now this is the question the first question most of the time you get questions like this from the topic of vesicular bullous disorder now let's read the question the question says a 50 year old female who presents with a history of erosions in the buccal mucosa blisters on her upper chest and back and on examination the bulla are flaccid filled with clear fluid what is the clinical diagnosis we have four options pemphigus vulgaris bullous pemphigoid staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome and toxic shock syndrome so first of all can anybody solve this question anybody can solve this question try to answer this question i, I can see the live chat so if you answer i can just see them very nice very nice sairam dr ajay uh, shrijani very well the answer to this question is option number 1 but for those who do not know how to solve this question we will discuss some tips and tricks first of all i want all of you to please listen to me very carefully what do you mean by vesiculo bullous disorder this is a very classical question from a topic that is vesiculo bullous disorder vesiculo bullous disorder now what are these disorders these are those group of disorders in which you see development of either vesicles or bulla and what is vesicle or bulla they are fluid filled lesions on the skin so in a very simple word whenever you see collection of water or collection of fluid not exactly water but collection of fluid in the skin you will label that under the broad heading of vesicular bullous disorder now the question is why you have collection of fluid in the skin anywhere either in epidermis dermis why do you have collection of fluid there are two reasons one is either there is damage to the cells for example there is damage to the keratinocytes the keratinocytes got ruptured and there is accumulation of fluid second is there is loss of intercellular connections the keratinocytes get separated and there is collection of fluid i hope this is very easy and clear to all of you so vesicular bullous disorders can be because of damage to the cells or because of separation of the cells now we have divided vesicular bullous disorders into two broad category if the fluid is collected in the epidermis those lesions are known as intra epidermal split intra epidermal split if the collection of fluid is seen inside the epidermis intra epidermal split and if you see the collection of fluid in the dermis or in the basement membrane below the epidermis it is known as sub epidermal split so please remember my students we have broadly classified vesicular bullous disorders into two group depending upon the collection of the fluid if it is inside the epidermis we call it as intra epidermal and if it is inside the or below the epidermis either in basement membrane or dermis it is known as sub epidermal split now how to solve the questions or how to know whether it is a intra epidermal split or sub epidermal split in the question you will get a word flaccid or tense they will give you a word if the split is inside your epidermis they will call it as a flaccid split or a flaccid bulla and if the level of collection is below the epidermis they will give you a word that is tense i hope everybody knows this now please have a look on these two types of the bulla flaccid bulla means where the roof is very thin the roof is very thin 
and dense means where the roof is very thick. Obviously, if the fluid is collected below the epidermis, the whole thickness of the epidermis form the roof and the bulla will be thick. But in the intraepidermal split, only few layers of the epidermis will form the roof and the bulla will be flaccid. So flaccid bulla is very, very classical of intraepidermal split. And tense bulla is very, very classical of subepidermal split. So this is very easy. With a single word, you can easily differentiate whether it is intraepidermal or subepidermal. The question clearly mentions that it is a flaccid bulla. So can anybody tell me which option we can easily rule out just by looking at this word flaccid? Anyone? Can you tell me what is that option which you can easily rule out? Flaccid means it is an intraepidermal split. The option which is an example of subepidermal split, it is bullous pemphigoid. So please remember this cannot be the answer because bullous pemphigoid, the level of split is at the basement membrane and you will get a tense bulla. Very nice, Palak, Nagesh, Asin, Anish, Shah, very, very easy question that bullous pemphigoid can never be the answer because they have given a word flaccid. Now, for your remembering, let us make a table so that you can understand it for future. What are the examples which comes under intraepidermal and what are the examples which comes under subepidermal? If you want, you can draw it along with me. In intraepidermal, we have divided them into three groups. One is when the fluid is collected just below the stratum corneum, when the fluid is collected at the stratum spinosum layer, and the third is when it is collected at either stratum basal or supra basal level. So these are the three examples under the intraepidermal split. Please remember this chart is very important. I have seen a lot of MCQs from this. So if you have an empty paper with you, try to write it down. For subcorneal, the example is pemphigus foliaceus. Any can, anybody can tell me the other answers here. Bullus impetigo, which is a bacterial infection, secondary to streptococcus. And last is staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. So bullus impetigo and staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, both are the infective condition which presents with subcorneal split. The examples under the spinous cell layer defect is viral blisters. So you must have seen Vesicles in viral infections, for example, in chickenpox, in herpes zoster lesions, herpes genitalis, you have vesicles. So the level of fluid connections in these is spinous cell layer. While the example under the basal and suprabasal is very simple, it is pemphigus vulgaris. Pemphigus vulgaris. Then we have Haley Haley disease and Darius disease. Haley-Haley disease and Darius disease. Please remember, again I am telling you, these are very, very important. You get a lot of MCQs here. Now coming to the examples under the subepidermal, please remember the examples under the subepidermal are, we have bullous pemphigoid, we have pemphigoid gestationalis, Pemphigoid gestationalis. The next is dermatitis herpetiformis. Herpetiformis. And the last one is linear IgA disease. Linear IgA disease. There are many more examples, but these are some examples which are very, very important for you to remember because I've seen a lot of MCQs from this particular point. So if you have noticed in our MCQ, there was one option that is bullous pemphigoid, which is actually a subepidermal split example and there should be a tense bulla. And that is why we have ruled out that option. Now let us go back to that MCQ. Everyone, I hope you have done with writing. Let's go back to this MCQ. The MCQ, what are the other options? Other options were staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, pemphigus vulgaris and toxic shock syndrome. Please remember my students, 
even in staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome and toxic shock syndrome you see intra epidermal split we have just now discussed that in both of them we have subcorneal split but can you tell me what is that point which help us differentiate both these two from pemphigus vulgaris anything in the question which can help you differentiate pemphigus vulgaris patient from staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome anyone so the next thing which you have to keep in your mind is you have to look for the presence of oral lesions remember my students in pemphigus vulgaris along with flaccid bulla on your skin you see oral cavity lesions but in examples like staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome toxic shock syndrome even in bullus impetigo there is no there is no mucosal lesion no mucosal lesion i hope this point is very easy and clear to all of you so even you can rule out the mcqs and come to a diagnosis of pemphigus vulgaris is this point clear if you have any confusion just let me know and we will do one more mcq so that you will definitely understand why the answer comes here as bullus impetigo no it is pemphigus vulgaris clear now let's do another question the next question is here on your screen you have to tell me looking at the type of the bulla looking at the involvement of the oral cavity whether this is a question of intraepidermal split or a subepidermal split and what is the correct answer here so the question on your screen is a 24 year old female has flaccid bulla in the skin presence of oral lesions histopathology shows intraepidermal acantholytic blister the most likely diagnosis is so anybody can tell me the answer here option is pemphigus vulgaris pemphigoid dermatitis herpetiformis and erythema multiforme very nice harshita himanshu mohit vikas animesh sandeep again look for the two important points whenever you have vesicular bullous disorder first thing is look for the type of bulla here they have again mentioned that the bulla is a flaccid bulla so flaccid means you can easily rule out the sub epidermal split and sub epidermal split is seen in bullous pemphigoid so this cannot be the answer even dermatitis herpetiformis has a sub epidermal split erythema multiforme is usually a drug reaction or an infective condition nothing like that is given in the question and can anybody tell me what is the classical lesion of erythema multiforme why this cannot be erythema multiforme you can even get oral lesions in erythema multiforme why this is not erythema multiforme because in erythema multiforme you have a classical lesion which is known as a target lesion nothing like that is mentioned in the question so this cannot be erythema multiforme the answer to this question is again pemphigus vulgaris clear so i think everybody knows about this please remember vesicular bullous disorder is a very important topic in neat pg 2021 2022 both of these neat pg we have got a question from this disorder the question which we got recently was very easy question the question was a patient with flaccid bulla oral lesions which of the following is the correct answer one option was pemphigus vulgaris another was foliaceous third was pemphigus vegetans can you tell me what is the answer let me write that question for all of you the question which we got is recently question was a young patient with flaccid bulla on the skin flaccid bulla on skin oral mucosal erosions what will be the diagnosis now everyone the options which were given this year was pemphigus vulgaris the next was pemphigus vegetans third was pemphigus foliaceus and fourth was bullus pemphigoid now can anybody solve this question it was a very easy question which was given but a lot of students got confused in option number 2 and option number 1 so anybody can tell me the answer here very nice sana anusha sandeep palak 
urban vikas very nice the correct answer is again the same the answer is pemphigus vulgaris only because they have clearly mentioned that it was a flaccid bulla with oral lesions why it is not pemphigus foliaceus because in pemphigus foliaceus you never see oral mucosal lesion no oral lesion what about bullus pemphigoid you have tens bulla and can you tell me what is pemphigus vegetans it is a variant of pemphigus vulgaris which presents with a very classical vegetative growth it will not present with any flaccid bulla it will present with vegetative growth on flexural areas like axilla groin intermammary area etc so this was a recent question which we got in our neat pg exam so i hope you have understood this is a very simple question but a very important one because you can get a mcq from this particular topic so thank you all of you i hope you have understood uh, the question which we have given and please try to remember this list because you do get a lot of mcqs they will ask you among the four which is intraepidermal and which is sub epidermal so thank you all of you good day and take care we will come again with another sessions like that if you have any doubt you can just post it on the chat section below and tomorrow we will be back with another important session of wednesday wisdom